until about a month ago, I was an avid Canon user. My first point and shoot was a Canon, my first DSLR was a Canon, and my first proper higher quality vlogging camera was also a Canon, which was the Canon G7X Mark II. And I loved it. I was so used to the way that the Canon shot and like the, the quality of the video and the user interface, and I loved it so, so much. However, I was also a little bit interested in getting the Sony RX105 purely for the slow-mo capabilities. It wasn't until I was in Vietnam and I was taking some photos on a cliff and by accident I threw my cannon off the edge of the cliff. <sighs> Which is not ideal at all. But it meant that I had the opportunity to buy a new camera, which is the Sony RX105. First of all, I'm gonna say I love both of them. Canon and Sony, I really, I really truly think that they're both really, really good quality cameras. And especially for vlogging purposes, they're really great. The Sony, I do love the Sony. However, the main issue, I had this as soon as I started using the Sony. This little movie button, is so tiny and it's really flat against the casing so it's actually like when you're vlogging especially on the go and you want to reach around and press record it's actually kind of hard to press the button also when you flip it up and you're looking at the screen when you press the button it's the record like the writing that says it's recording is really really tiny and it's not like a bright red as well so when i'm recording like this it's actually kind of hard to see if it's recording i have to be like oh wait Okay, yeah it is. Which, I, like I guess, that's not a huge issue, definitely not, but it is kind of annoying every time. Canon never had that issue. Canon is, the record button is quite big, but it was never hard to find or anything like that, and you always knew when it was recording. So that's my first con about the Sony. The next con is that the image stabilization isn't isn't as good as I thought it would be. Like, to be honest, I, I really thought that it was gonna be better. Um, I noticed at first, of course, when I was vlogging in Vietnam, just while I was walking compared to the Canon, you can really tell that it's, there's quite a big difference between this image stabilization on the Canon as opposed to the Sony. Um, the other one that I think is kind of annoying is it takes a little bit longer to start it up. So when I press the start button, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and now I can record. Okay, I'll be honest though, I did just recharge the battery and I put in a new put in a new SD card, which means that it takes longer to, uh, to start it up. But the Canon never had this issue. The Canon, you can press the on button and it will start recording within three seconds. Which like, I guess that's not like a huge deal for a lot of people, but if you're like me and you're traveling a lot and I don't know, something really exciting that's happening, you wanna get your camera and film it straight away, you can't really do that with the Sony because you have to take into account like it's gonna start up, especially if you've changed the battery or the SD card, it takes longer. And also I'm not ever really sure when it's ready to start recording because it, it'll just have nothing on the screen, like no displays around the edge um, until I, I'll press the record button and then nothing will happen. So I press it again and then it goes standby, record. Oh, it's down standby again. So it's, it's kind of hard to tell if, if I can actually start recording yet. It's not a huge issue though. Like if you're just like sitting down talking, making videos like that, it's not an issue at all, actually. Um, another thing is that the, the menu, and I've had a lot of people say about this with the Sony menu, is that the user interface is really quite frustrating to use. Like it's, it's I don't know, it's very like complicated and everything is like hidden away in like little like sub menus and subcategories and, and like I just want to change the frame rate and I have to like go into the menu and find like exactly what category it fits under and the Canon has a really easy um, quick setup menu I think you just press like from memory press the middle button and then all the menu displays on the side pretty much all of the recording features you can change it right there on on the on the display when I was using the Canon I used to use 25 frames per second most of the time and then whenever I wanted to film something and like smooth it out, make it a bit slower, I would use the 50 frames per second. And it was really easy to change between the two frame rates. But with the Sony, because it's so hidden within the menu settings, I, I just can't be bothered to do that while I'm traveling and filming at the same time. And it's, 
it would just be too much of a hassle to do that. So that's why now I just film everything on 50 frames per second, because then I can slow it down if I need to um, without having to change the settings while I'm filming, which is kind of not the best because I would prefer to have 25 frames per second if I'm just doing regular stuff. But you know, that's the trade-off I'm gonna go with because I'm a little bit lazy like that. <laughs> Uh, another thing that I've noticed is that if I'm filming something, say in like, a, uh, like an environment like this, where there's a lot of artificial lighting and stuff like that, it'll, it'll choose this white balance. And then if I move into say daylight, it doesn't adjust the white balance with like different situations, which I find a little bit annoying because sometimes you're walking from, you know, from outdoors to indoors and then, you know, the, the color is really, really yellow or really, really blue or something like that. So that's kind of, kind of annoying. From memory, I'm pretty sure that the Canon G7X Mark II does do that. So yeah, there you go. That was one difference that I noticed. On to, <laughs> poor little Sony, I'm like ripping you to shreds. Um, on to the Canon G7X Mark II cons. The biggest con that I was really sad about is that there is no higher frame rates, which means you can't do much slow motion. The highest frame rate it goes up to is 50 frames per second, which is okay for, for a lot of filming. Most filming, you don't really need anything more than 50 frames per second, but if you're wanting to make more like, cinematic kinds of films, or if you're wanting to do things in slow motion or sports or stuff like that, you might want to have a higher frame rate and the Canon doesn't offer that. To be honest, I think I didn't look into it that much before I bought the Canon and then I got it and I was really disappointed because I wanted to make videos like Sarah Dietschy and I couldn't because there was no slow motion capabilities. So I was a bit sad about that. Uh, the Sony, however, goes anywhere from 250 frames per second to like a thousand frames per second, which is crazy. Um, I mean, granted, if you go to a thousand frames per second, the quality um, goes down a little bit, but 250 frames per second is definitely enough and it does really great quality slow motion and I love it. Another thing that I'm not a fan of about the Canon is that the, the autofocus was quite slow. It, like it wasn't too bad and it, it, actually I really enjoyed that on the screen you can tap where you want to focus on and it will usually it will adjust to where you've tapped um, the Sony however has a really 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 excellent autofocus it, it autofocuses really quickly and uh, that was a big difference I noticed it straight away so some of the biggest differences that I've noticed my boyfriend also has the Sony no he has the Canon G7X Mark II and we held both of our cameras together I'm kind of I'm really sad that I can't do that in this video like a proper comparison video so sorry about that but you know, mine is completely broken. Um, so we held both of the cameras together and the biggest difference I could notice was that the Sony has kind of like a cooler setting. So the whites are a little bit bluer, whereas the Canon has a, a warmer kind of lighting. So everything's like a little bit more orange. And honestly, I feel like when I film myself with the Canon, my skin tone looks a lot better. <laughs> like I look a bit, a little bit ill with this one sometimes, especially because I'm quite a pale person. That was a big difference. Although it doesn't really matter too much if you're doing color grading and color correction and stuff like that, you can always change them up depending on the scene anyway. Another thing that I also noticed is the price. Uh, the price for the Canon, uh, the cheapest I found was about $700 Australian, but for the Sony, it was like $1,000. $100 that was the cheapest I could find so that's quite a big price difference I guess it doesn't matter too much I think if you're gonna spend a lot of money on a camera like a little an extra $300 $400 doesn't matter that much um, but it might matter to some people if they're on a, a bit of a tighter budget and also the Sony RX 105 can film up to 4k only for I think it's like five or ten minutes uh, filming time before it uh, like overheats and dies um, whereas the Canon does not have any 4k capability that's not an issue for me though because my computer can't handle 4k footage anyway so I'm not filming anything in 4k so yeah those are my major differences uh, pros and cons between both the Canon and the Sony the final thing that I have to say is I love them both. Honestly, I, I really, really enjoyed using both of them. If you're wondering which one is better for you, 
Honestly, I think it depends what you're trying to film. If you're just wanting to film like, again, let's keep saying this, a lot of like sitting down kind of thing or things where the camera is still or even travel vlogging, um, a lot more casual videos, that kind of thing. The Canon G7X Mark II is a wonderful camera and it's very reliable. If you're wanting to film stuff, especially with slow motion, uh, get the Sony RX100 Mark V because it has the capabilities for it. And there's a couple more like features that you can use within the camera. They're a little bit harder to use and a little bit harder to get used to, but once you do get used to it, you can get some really, really excellent quality videos with the Sony. If they could just combine, if Canon made the G7X Mark III and it had the same slow motion capabilities as this, or even like 120 frames per second capability, I would buy it so quickly, like <laughs> so quickly. So that is my final, my final word, yes, on the two cameras. Um, if you've got either of these cameras and there's anything that I didn't mention, write it in the comments down below. Let me know what your experiences are like with either of the cameras. If this is the first video of mine that you're watching, thank you so much for watching. I am Hannah <laughs> and I'm a performer, but I am currently unemployed, yay! So I'm um, doing a lot of traveling at the moment. I'm making a lot of travel videos and I'll occasionally do a tech video like this. Uh, so if any of that sounds like fun to you, hit the subscribe button. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for watching. You might also notice that I'm not traveling at the moment. I'm currently in Australia and I'm filming this in my parents' garage. <laughs> so that means that I can actually like have a proper microphone and my dad's camera and like lighting and everything like that. Uh, so that's good. Also, you might notice my hair isn't purple anymore. I had to, I had to dye my hair back from purple to like a normal color uh, because I've been doing a bunch of auditions at the moment, but a bit more on that later. But that's why my hair is like some like greenish or full blonde color. Um, I need to fix that, definitely. Yeah, it's really bad. So I just finished editing my Vietnam vlog series and the next one will be Japan because I recently just went to Osaka, Japan to visit my boyfriend. So I'm actually really looking forward to editing those videos because I've got some really great footage and also I just love Japan. So <laughs> um, I hope that you can look forward to that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.